Greetings, my cherished learners. Welcome to another episode of Science with Ajizi. In this episode, we will learn about the periodic table. I believe it's not the first time, but I told you I'm here for the foundation to make you understand the principles, the concepts of everything here. So, by the end of this lesson, we will be able to explain the periodic table. We will also be able to write or draw the periodic table for the first 20 elements. So we can think of a periodic table like when you go to a shopping center, um, let's say the mall, um, where, 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 where you go and then you ask the attendant what you are, you are in for, the person will direct you to where that particular item is. And that is how it is, it's been arranged. The items in the shop have been categorically arranged. When you go to a bookshop or a stationery shop, you realize that markets have been arranged at where you, can, you keep markets, pens, and books, exercise books. And that is how orderly the items are arranged in the bookshop. Now, as, the, as scientists kept discovering the elements and atoms, we, we, the, it became so much that remem remembering them were a bit of a problem. So scientists devised a means to help easy remembrance of the elements. As it stands now, we have over one, we have 118 elements in existence. Imagine, remember our first 20 elements from hydrogen to to calcium. Now we have added like another hundred elements that we supposed to keep in mind. You know, right? You can't. So the scientists devised a strategy to help group them into their various categories based on their characteristics that they share in common. So they they gave us the periodic table, and the periodic table. It's just a table of elements, of the chemical elements, basically containing elements, and it is used to classify all the elements according to their increasing atomic numbers, their electronic configuration, and then their occurring chemical properties. So the, the three items that were used to create the periodic table, one is their atomic numbers. Atomic numbers, then two, the electronic configuration, configuration, and then occurring, occurring chemical properties. So the arrangement of elements into the table according to their increasing atomic numbers and the electronic configuration and then their occurring chemical properties and on the periodic table you would hear group group and a group is a group is basically the vertical blocks vertical blocks of elements so first group second group third group and so forth then you would also hear a period. A period is the horizontal, so period one, period two, all based on the properties of the element you are dealing with. And most of the time, to the group is also known as family. So you know, families share some, 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 some traits and characteristics that are linked to all of them. So. Without much wasting my time, let's first go on with our periodic table and look at the periodic table for the first 20 elements. So I said we have group and period. The group is the vertical, then the period is the horizontal. So straight away, this is group one, group two, group three group four group five group six group seven and then group 
eight. Now, so this, 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 this are the vertical bars or the very vertical column. The vertical column are called group. Then I said the period, the period are uh, the horizontal one. So this is so we have our period one here. Period two. Please, it's not P1, P2. <laughs> period three and then period four elements. So now let's talk about how to get the period and then the group. So simply the group of an element, it is the valence electrons or the number of electrons in the large shell. The number of electrons in the large shell gives the group of an element. Then the number of shells, so number of electrons in the outermost shell, the large shell tells the group of the atom or the element then the, the number of shells or energy levels of the atom tells its period. So first, let's start with hydrogen. Hydrogen, the atomic number of hydrogen is one. So our hydrogen is here. One. Hydrogen is one. So it means that if you write the configuration, hydrogen is just one. So it has one in the last shell and one shell. If you come, the next element is helium. Helium is HE and it is 2. Helium has 2 electrons. Or the atomic number of helium is 2. So helium would be here. As the time goes on, I will explain why helium is there. And then the next one is lithium. Lithium is 3. Atomic number of lithium is 3. And the configuration is 2 and then 1. 2 and then 1. So the number of electrons in the large shell of lithium is 1. It means that lithium is in group 1. And the number of shells is 1, 2. So lithium is in period 2. So group 1, period 2. So lithium is here. That is 3. This is 2. We move on to... Beryllium. Beryllium is four. That is two and two. So beryllium has two shells. So beryllium is in period two, but the number of electrons in the large shell is two. So beryllium is in group two. So group two. Beryllium, period two. So BE. Then we move to boron. Boron is five. So we have two and then three so straight away boron is in group three so here is our group three and then period two so group three period two so this is our boron b then we move to carbon carbon is the atomic number for carbon is six so two and then four here carbon is in group four because the number of electrons in the last shell is four. So group four is here and period two. So four here. So this is carbon. This is four. Sorry, this is four. And then this is five. And carbon is six. So C six. So carbon is in group four, period two, because it has two shells. Then the last element is calcium. Calcium has the atomic number of 20. So it is 2882. Four shells, like first, second, third, fourth. So 2882. Fourth shell, the number of electrons, the outermost shell or the valence electron is 2. So group 2, calcium is here. 20, period 4. So this is the periodic table representation for our first 20 elements. I believe this has been helpful. Same applies to all the elements. So once you know, but on the periodic table, the ones with the 118 elements, we have a, group, a session called 
the transition element, we have the metalloid, and then all these groups have got special names. When, when we take group one, group one elements are called alkali, alkali metals. Metals. Group two are called alkali et metals. Group seven are called halogens. Halogens. And then group eight also sometimes called group zero, group eight are called noble gases. So, when, while we began, we realized that helium had two. It means that helium should have been in group two, but group, helium has a, spe it's a special one here because helium falls under the group of elements which are which have fully filled electronic configuration those that have fully filled electronic configuration are mostly placed in group eight the noble gases so here is two here is two eight here is two eight eight and so forth so so this explains why helium is placed in group eight even though it has atomic number of two it means that it, it will have two electrons but it is placed in group eight because it has a fully filled shell it, it is a noble gas they don't bond they don't form any compound with anybody group two elements form compound but helium does not react helium is unreacting just as neon and argon because they have fully filled electronic configuration so this has been another interesting episode for science with Ajizi periodic table i believe you learned something new when you are giving the atomic knowing our atomic numbers the first 20 elements and the other atomic number you should be able to draw your own periodic table and this will help us to to tell the number of ions an element or a metal should have all those in group one they have a charge of plus one all those in group two they have a charge of plus two. So once you have a compound, sodium, and then chlorine, with the help of the charges, you can predict the compound. Group three elements have a charge of a charge of plus three. It goes on. Now, when you come to group five, or you come to group five, here it is the number of electrons needed for it to be stable. And I have already we have already discussed in our in our earlier lessons that. When you accept electrons, you become negatively charged. So group five elements always are looking for three electrons for them to be stable. So here, group five elements, they have a charge of minus three. Group six elements are looking for two electrons, we have eight. So they have a charge of minus two. So oxygen is minus two, sulfur is minus two. When you go to group seven, group seven element needs just one electron to be stable so all group seven elements have a charge of minus one so f fluorine is minus one chlorine is minus one i think this has been really helpful and once we stick to this it will help us when we start looking at balancing of chemical equation and then writing of the chemical formulas of compounds another interesting episode of science i just say thanks for having me